Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. And as you could tell from the minimal gear that I just loaded, we are on a small little mission here. We are going to catch, clean, and cook a walleye. That is our, our mission right now. It's about an hour before sunset right now, so I don't have much time. I'm in a whiteout, I'm in a blizzard, so it's going to get darker quicker than it normally would if there was blue skies. We're gonna drag our gear out to the lake, and like I said, we're gonna go catch a walleye and then we're gonna go back to the garage. We're gonna clean it and we're gonna cook it. That's the mission right now. I have no other camera be fishing besides the head camera. And yeah, we're going super minimal. Just got an hour, let's go make it happen. Here we go. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> well, that didn't take that long at all. I'm in 23 feet right now. It's off of this point. Whoa, I don't got my cleats on. Oh, yeah. Perfect eater, baby. Yes. Well, maybe, unless I lose him in the hole. Maybe a little too big to eat. Uh, no, he's probably 18, 19, 18, I'd say. He's at my top end of supper for sure. Probably 18-ish, but I'm keeping them. I'm only keeping two tonight, one for me, one for Carter, and yeah, awesome. As you can see, I tried one, two, three, four, five different holes. I'm gonna pull my sleigh over to here where I caught this last one, and yeah, see if we can catch uh, one more. I'll likely fish to dark no matter what, just because, well, I'm fishing, right? But the goal is to catch one more, a little bit smaller than that, and uh, we'll be good. So I'm fishing outside. This is one of my favorite rods to use. This is a Frostbite run-in gun. It's a 50-inch rod, and I've got it paired with a 1,000 size diesel from Frostbite also. And on there, I've got 10-pound suffix 832 ice braid when you're fishing outside this line is nice so you can kind of take your ice and slide it right down your line and then on the bottom of that uh braid i have a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader about a four or five foot piece tied to a uni to uni it's connected with the uni to uni knot and then for a bait right now i have on the 60 millimeter tantrum from frostbite called the frosty clownfish it's a good little run and gun bait like this where i can check a couple different holes move around a little bit not have to worry about bait i do have another bait with me in case they get finicky and then i just popped an eyeball from that fish to use if i find some finicky fish but right now that seemed to be uh the a good combination there a little rattle bait that fish come up and hammered me things are good i'm on a pretty steep drop off here so i don't always work the bait right on the bottom working at about two three feet off the bottom because they'll relate to this structure here beside me too that there's like a real steep drop off and if i put it right down on the bottom these fish that are shallower won't see my bait at all so there's nothing wrong with being a little bit higher when you're on some steeper structure nice fish two baby fish two Okay, that's probably a little bit better eater, maybe a little bit too small. We'll throw him back. Since we're only going to keep two, we'll go for one bigger than that. <laughs> See ya. And this is that bait I was using, Frosty Clownfish, I said. Uh, it's a 60 mm, 60 millimeter tantrum from Frostbite. Nice. What do we got here? What do we got here? Feels okay. Feels okay. Yeah. It's a nice eating size walleye that I just lost at the hole. Oh well, that's okay. It's okay. And also, I thought it was a pike at first. Nice, right on the bottom. Right in my dead zone there. Because I'm on that big drop off. 
It just dropped right below that dead zone. And yeah, these long rods are so nice. And there is my other eater maybe. Ah, he's still a little too small and he's got a bunch of stuff going on with him. I think, uh, I think we'll let this guy go. Yeah, see ya buddy. I see lots of people make a mistake when they're fighting a fish through the ice. They end up pointing their rod down at the ice. You wanna keep your hand out further, your arm further, and let that rod do the work. Don't point your rod tip at the hole because then there's no forgiveness. Keep your rod out here at a good angle like that and let the rod do the work. I talked about that being down in the dead zone because I got that sharp drop off here. My transducer reads the edge of it, right? Right now I got a nine foot cone radius. So I've got four and a half feet out. So I got a sharp drop off there. I got to bring my bait up about mm, two feet before I can finally see it. That's what I really love about live imaging is there's no dead zone. It's so good. Oh yeah. Nice. Nice. Feels small. Feels small. Yeah. Well, it's getting to be a little bit darker. I could probably catch a couple more fish, but I think we're going to work our way off of the ice here and uh, go back and clean my fish up. It's snowing quite a bit. As you can see, my, my sleigh is a little... Uh, snow covered i got one fish there which is which is lots that he's uh he's a little bit bigger than i normally keep like i say he's probably 19 inches something like that and yeah we'll go clean him up and then cook him up we are back in the garage about to clean up our walleye right here first thing i'm gonna say a sharp sharp knife is always the best this is actually a custom knife from my buddy doug bar she sent me a couple years ago and i just got it freshly sharpened by the razor's edge cameron tate and it is super sharp but it's an awesome knife a sharp knife is definitely the key now i'm going to try to set up the camera the best i can to clean this fish and then also use the head camera and explain the process if the video doesn't turn out very good in terms of angles i will redo this one day with somebody holding the fish so let's let's start cleaning them up i guess there's really nothing else to say besides let's clean them up so hopefully it's not too frozen yet i like to use as much of this fish as i can so there's actually three different sections here we're going to do we're going to call we're going to do what's called the wings the cheeks and then the fillets i like to take the wings off first for that all i do is go underneath the fish here underneath these two fins it's a little bit frozen still, but then come down here, cut, up, up, kind of like just on the top side of these fins right here. And then kind of to his, his throat, right about here-ish. And that's what we'll, uh, we call the wings. These are over, often overlooked, but a very, very good piece. And you actually, when you fry it up, you can actually eat some of these fins as well, potato chips. You can take the skin off, or you can eat this with the skin too. There's no like scales in this part here. Like there are scales here. This is all smooth, so you can eat that. I guess there's a little bit there. No, there's no scales there. It's not like scales here. So you can eat that obviously, if you want to take, the, take some of the skin off too which is perfectly fine. You can kind of just go along the bottom here and remove some of the, some of the skin. Next, the, the filet. So I'm not somebody that likes to slab my fish. I don't cut down and cut through. I like to keep the, the rib bone on the fish. That way it's gonna keep your knife a lot sharper. So this is really, really good meat up here. So what I try to do is come in and then slowly start to turn my knife here and try to get as much of this head meat as I can. Now, if you really want to use as much or really want to use all this meat to the wall, you could make like a, a fish soup out of the head. So I kind of cut in, swung a little bit, and now I'm just going down through the top of this fish. I'm only going about this deep with the knife right now, though. And then once I get to this top fin, I'm going to come straight through here. So I'm just at the top of that bottom fin right there. And now I'll keep my knife at a, my knife at a little bit of an angle this way and then follow through all the way to the tail. Don't cut up, try not to cut down, just er, uh, straight through a little bit downwards and that'll take all that meat off of that tail. So find that where I was there, come through, a little bit of a downward angle, pressure towards that, I guess, whatever the, the center bone is there. And I went and got lots of nice meat all the way to the, to the tail. So now what I'll do here 
is I will actually skin the meat off of the ribs as I go. Like I said, keeping the ribs on the actual fish. This is just going to save your knife from not dulling as quick. When you cut through those rib bones, that's what really is gonna dull your knife fast. So if you've ever like skinned a deer, that's kind of like what I'm doing here, like taking like your, your uh, back strap off of their, their ribs there at the top, not the ribs, but. So yeah, so there, so I have one filet right here. Now you could just cut that off, but what I like to do is keep it on yet to work on the other side. It just makes things a little bit easier. Keep it on, flip it over right here and do the same process on this side. Lift that fin up, come down, and then I'm kind of turning my knife a little bit towards this back as much as I can. Same thing on this side here, just running my knife, like I said, about this much of the tip through all the way to there, there, and down. And like I said, trying to keep it, trying to get all that meat right off of there. So here again, keep all this. I'll go down that rib bone here with my knife. There, so I got my other piece off. Now what you can do right here Grab the head, that's already off, but sometimes it'll be stuck a little bit, you go because of the, you don't get all the way to the wing. We come here, lift, just cut all the way here and down. That knife is super sharp, awesome. So there I have my, my two fillets and there'll be a, another process here. Okay, so I got my two fillets. I'll just put those right here for a second. We're gonna take out what's called the cheeks. There's nice meat here, freshwater scallops basically. You just cut in, down, Come on, keep going. Come on this side a little bit here. A sharp knife is always good for this. There's some people that use like a sharpened spoon to dig in there. Works really, really good. The smaller the walleye, the harder it is to take the cheeks out. But these cheek meats like a freshwater scallop. I didn't do the best job with that. I left a little bit of meat right here. That's why I said the spoon can be a little bit better. There. Right there. One. And we'll, we'll, do, we'll try to do better on this side here. I didn't do a great job with that one. This is something that's a little bit easier when you're de dealing with it inside, right? Whereas outside in the cold, not as easy to do. We did a little bit better with this one right here. And that's two, two freshwater scalps. Now I have my two fillets. This is the butthole right here of the fish, so you don't wanna have that in here. So you go a little bit of this side here, cut down, and then a little bit over here. We're taking out what's called the belly meat. Your belly meat, is your highest in mercury right there. It's not gonna kill you if you have some of them, but if you eat a lot of, a lot of mercury, obviously it's not a good thing. I'm gonna do this one nice. I'm gonna purposely mess this one up a little bit to show you a cool little trick if you end up cutting through the skin. What I do here is I'll grab a little bit of meat to hold on to. Again, you're kind of keeping your knife at a little bit of a downward angle and just skinning it. I'm kind of like holding the knife still and kind of wiggling the skin back and forth like that, and then there, it'll be a nice solid piece. It, it just is sticking because it's all slimy, but it is definitely off. So you don't want to go too deep because you don't want all this membrane stuff on your fish because that'll give you a fishy taste. Now, you got one bone left in here. It comes from about right here and goes all the way down. There's two ways to take this out. You can do what's called a pant leg. You can go on this side and this side, or another cool trick. You can hear what's called zippering. You can take your knife and you can go on this side of the tail, slit, this side of the tail, slit. And you can grab these pieces right here and you can zipper that main bone right out. This is going to be your least amount of meat wasted all the time. Just like that. 
there's your center bone right there, your fishy taste to that fish. So there is, there is one side of the fillet finished. Now I'm going to purposely mess this one up to show you a cool trick here. So you're cutting along here and all of a sudden your knife goes too far and it cuts right into the skin. You're like, oh, how do I restart this? Oh no. Simple. Go a little bit further ahead where that skin is. So the skin's here. Cut here and just restart this whole process like that. Hold on to this all the way through. And then you can turn your fillet around like this and you can perfectly slide your knife this way. So if you ever get to that point where you, you, you cut too far and you cut down into the skin and it's like, I can't get my knife back in there to restart, start over and then go backwards. And then from here, cause since we, now we can't really zipper this one as well. We'll just make two pieces right here, one there, and then one here. So this is all boneless right there. The two freshwater scallops, one side of the fish, the other side of the fish and the wings. So there's how I clean walleye. Obviously there's many different ways you can do it. I don't waste any meat like this or I'm very, very minimal. It works for me and it keeps my knife definitely sharper for a longer period of time. Well, we've caught the walleye, we've cleaned the walleye. Now we got to cook the walleye. I'm going to show you literally the simplest way, in my opinion, to cook fish quickly, but yet still taste good. Deep frying it with catch and cook. My favorite, the spicy. So all you'll need for this is literally three ingredients. Your catch and cook, canola oil, Frank's Red Hot. My fish is right here. My oil is already in the pan right here. So what I'm gonna do, first step, get this oil warm or hot basically, but that's the first step. Get your oil hot. So our oil is now warming up, getting hot. We're gonna put our Frank's Red Hot in. Frank's is for a binder, so the coating sticks to the fish really good. You can use egg wash, you can do whatever you want, but I prefer the Frank's for it. It gives a little bit of extra flavor and it it's not spicy. Believe it or not, like after you deep fry it, it kind of takes the spice out of it. So it ends up being just a little bit of a flavor. I'm not putting in that much. I'm putting in just enough to kind of coat all the fish. You don't want to have a bunch of extra moisture or you can end up with a goopy mess when you put your batter on. Okay, so everything's battered. Now we won't put our catch and cook into this bag until that oil is hot enough. If it sits too long, again, you can end up with a goopy mess. So you just kind of let it all sit there and uh, marinate a little bit. And right before your oil gets hot, you put on the batter. Now, I don't know the exact temperature. I think it's like a 375 ish, but I can see that the oil is starting to kind of wave a little bit. That's telling me that it's getting hot enough now so I can put my batter in with my fish and get it cooking. There is a link below in the channel where you can get all of the catch and cook stuff. It helps out my channel if you buy from it, but if you're say in Regina, Pokey's Tackle Shop carries it. There's a bunch of different other uh, tackle shops and places that carry the catch and cook stuff. Whether you buy it from my link or just anywhere in general, it's, it's good, so. And it's good stuff, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, in the oil we go. Yep, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, and there's the wings. I'm gonna eat that one on video. My oil is really hot right now, so I'm just pulling off my pan just to let it cool a little bit first. Another way to quickly cool your pan is to put more oil into it. This got really hot on me quick because I usually put more oil in, so that's why it got nice and hot on me quick, but it's still, right now, it's like the perfect temperature and it doesn't have to be on that flame to be cooking. The oil just has to be hot. In fact, it's gonna end up finishing right like this itself. So we'll just let her cook up. As you can tell, it's ready. Fish does not take that long to cook at all. Okay, we'll let this cool and then we'll eat the wing right on video. Having a tough time getting this focused here, but I got the wing. So I said you can eat the end like potato chips. Don't go too far down. 
but you can eat those like little potato chips. They're crunchy. And then here, hopefully it's not too hot. You just, mmm. Slide it right off like that. Mmm. Those are the walleye wings. Really good. Kitchen cook. It's got a nice crunch to it. Nice crispy coating. Anyways, catch, clean, cook. Quick little video. We got her done. Obviously, there's many different ways that you can cook walleye. This is just one of them, a quick one. And I wanted to show it to people that may be new into getting out, catching a walleye, cleaning it, and cooking it. So thank you so much for watching, and don't forget, get outside.